Hello and welcome and in this video we're going to uh, start by creating the weapon swap animation because we're going to make our weapon swapping feel more nicer and right now it just switches the weapon and you don't even notice you just see the weapon just changed and another one just replaced so to make this work we're going to go and add a new state in the blend tree of the perform weapon switch or holster and this is going to contain an animation of swap weapon basically we're going to make this swap weapon using Two, three anim two animations the idle animation the hands down and then another animation with the hands where the rifles being aimed so something like that we're going to use those keyframes we're not going to animate them ourselves of course doing that then we could not do that in unity because unity does not support humanoid animation editing yet but yes yeah, so you can get something like this and use this instead and about there you could like add an, add an animation event yeah, I mean, so I just cut the keyframe to get the correct point where we want his hands to go down and not too much. And I'm gonna add the animation event right there. Another animation event. So, first one is gonna tell us let's create a new one and say drop corner weapon. We'll pick new weapon. These are the events we can call now. So first one, we're going to call drop new weapon drop weapon and then corner weapon and then pick new weapon so this is now going to work as we expect it to the function will be called at the correct times all right so let's see what we need to do next coding in the drop pick interactive weapon swap system so let's start by coding it out first we need an id So the swap weapon ID is going to be 9. And then we need the public void swap weapon passing weapon base and new weapon. Instead of that one, just going to replace and make, make a new one. So first you say a bit switching into perform true and the a bit switching state true. Then you want to set the trigger. So the trigger, the name, we're going to get it right now using the hash. Basically, first we need to say interacted new weapon is equal to the new weapon. I'm going to define it. It's just a weapon base of type interact, the name of interact new weapon, and no by default. I'll just put that there. For the trigger, we need to get a new string name for this one. And we'll get it like this. Alright, we have a field for that now. Actually, I don't know why this is doing what it's doing here. Maybe we should just put it back at the correct point where. It's about the animation, so it should be there. Now, after the weapon switch type name, I can put this in there instead. Swap weapon trigger name, which would technically be swap weapon, and pointless because you're using the same entry, meaning the same trigger will work. Just say perform weapon switch animation, but before that, assign the enemy to my ID, which would be swap weapon ID. All right. So now it's working as we expect it to. All right. We want to snap the current weapon to a gun slot, and we accept the smooth time as well. And just want to assign the gun holder slot as smooth time to the smooth time, so we can have some more flexibility to the smoothing time. Now we're gonna make a function for the drop current weapon, which is going to set the weapon data to false. Then it's going to set the parent of this object to null. Then the current weapon needs to get the event invoked um actually that already does it for us the set weapon data invokes the event i think yeah so we cannot we don't need to do that so current weapon to drop weapon and then current weapon dot add force to weapon which well the add force to weapon is going to add a force to it only we'll these two functions the drop weapon and the add force to weapon function First, you want to define a flow for the drop weapon force. This is the strength we are going to be passing, or the vector 3 is going to be calculated by a player because it knows the positions and stuff. So, we make a new function for the pick new weapon. And then, in here, I'm just going to assign the current weapon to the interactive new weapon, which will be assigned directly previously already assigned to the new weapon. So now we can set the weapon data to true. 
and we can set all like if followers target pass them the gun weapon and update the switching inputs next we'll call this function and pass in the point zero five or just have a field for this now we need to make those two functions before doing that let's just call on play control So now I'm going to implement those functions, but before that I'm going to require the component of type, which is body on the weapon base area. So that's because we need a weapon RB, which is body reference. Uh, we'll get that in the start function. Like this, we'll say that get component and get it. It's a public virtual void, so that we can override it over here. Right here I'm going to override it and do base.start. And then I'll just simplify that out. So now, what we need to do with the rigid body is first, we need to drop the weapon, and then we need to add a force to the weapon. So make a useful function to add forces to this weapon of us. But before that, I'm going to actually have to call this move weapon to right hand slot whenever we switch the swap the weapon, so that right away the hand is child to the right hand. All right. Now, right here in the interact function, after we do the swap weapon, we want to also enable our uh, weapon rigid body dot is schematic. So this is what the weapon base is going to do itself. So it's going to set it to true, so that after we have swapped the weapon already, now we have the kinematic back uh, on, so that we don't have forces and physics on anymore. Now, I'll make that function for adding force to the weapon. We'll take in a force and a force mode, which is by default to impulse. Then just pass the force and take the force mode. That's it. And then we just need a drop current weapon function in there. It will drop the weapon actually, the drop weapon. It's just going to set the kinematic to false. It's as simple as that. Just going to add a space like that. And I think it's pretty clean. So let's just should we name the header a bit. Save it out and now in the gun holder animated, I want to give expose these fields so that they're useful. Right now we just wrote match numbers and that's not a good practice. So I'm going to change that by firstly adding some spaces to make it look nicer in the editor. And I'm going to add fields for these. Public float walk sign multi, the sign curves multiplier, the key. the cost multi as for the cosine. And similarly for the others. Actually the y and x multipliers, we need to give them the synonym cost names. Now let's just use those first for this one. Now I'm going to make the similar things for crouch and sprinting. So first sprint y multi and then the sprint x multi space the crouch y multi and then the crouch x multi. Alright. Now another space just to show that thing. Now let's start using, actually it's different for the sprinting if you see. I just want to position these correctly to make sense, x, y should be properly aligned. So this was x, y, z, that makes sense. Actually we needed a y and x, we needed this one on the top. And we needed a sprint z as well, because there's a z axis movement for this one as well. <coughs> and now I'll replace these out, like this. And the Y multi and then the Z multi. Now I just want to position these again properly to make sense X and then Y, not Y and then X. <coughs> Next, I will just reposition those there as X, Y and put the walking as well. X, Y. Now we'll replace the crouching multipliers with this instead. Alright, so now we can. Save that out, I guess, and it should work. But providing a bit of more flexibility in the settings. So let's have a look at this and go to the AK 47. I'm going to set the mask actually to 3 because that was making more sense to me than 2. And I will enable continuous dynamic on each one of them, make sure they're all kinematic. 
And it looks like some animator settings are different on some weapons. So I'm just going to set them all to color update transforms and normal settings. And then I will remove that commented code or other comments. And let's move the swap weapon animation and we have this being called properly. And it drops the weapon. I think, I think behind we should drop the weapon and then you pick the weapon somewhere there. So let's give it a try. And as you can see, pretty quick. But it's much better than what we had originally. So the swap weapon can now be part of switching. And I can actually make one folder for this swapping and switching. It can be different folders. Alright, I just like to fine tune this, you know, to drop the weapon a bit earlier. Maybe at that point, keyframe number seven. All right, that looks pretty nice to me. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of this video. Um, see you in the next one, and please subscribe and like and join the Discord if you have any questions.